over the wall, around the corner, through the sub-basement, and into the Elder Dragon Social Club. This month on Elder Dragon Social Club, it's the first Wheel of Precons. We took unaltered, pre-constructed commander decks from the nearly complete collection that we have here at the Loading Ready Run Moon Base, and we put them up on a big game wheel. If you're curious, Graham picked the 20 decks, and he tried to keep it fairly color balanced, but we also discussed it internally and with some friends from the commander content community to uh, veto a few decks that are maybe not the most fun to play against. Now, of course, the players didn't know what decks they'd be playing until they gave it a spin, but if you know a deck that you'd like, or even just some singles for a deck that you're already brewing, please go over to cardkingdom.com slash edsc. Buying your cards from there lets Card Kingdom know that this is the kind of commander content that you want to see, and we certainly hope it is because this is the kind of commander content that we want to make, and also because they are the main sponsors of the show. EDSC is also brought to you by Dragon Shield, and while we're still working on production, EDSC and Loading Ready Run sleeves will be available at store.loadingreadyrun.com, so keep an eye on that. And of course, everything we do is brought to you by you at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. So without further ado, please enjoy the Wheel of Precons! All right, and now, as is tradition, it's time to spin the Wheel of Precons. This is super nostalgic for me. I grew up spinning this. I've always <laughs> wanted to be on this show spinning the wheel. This year's wheel looks really tangy. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> spin that wheel. All right, let's go. Black, 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 black. black. Uh. Hey! hey. Planar portal, prosper, tomebound. Oh, that's that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, tiny set appropriate dabs. <laughs> Come on, all these decks are good. Ooh. Okay. Missouri. We're, we're getting swole. Yeah. All right, here I'll trade you. In appropriate fashion. Okay, I've always been really bad at the wheel. It's the one part of my game that I can't get right. Ooh, Eternal Bar- Laura, wow, that's a classic one. Nice. All right. Not bad. Hey, I uh, didn't want to mention this, but I've been preparing for this for a while. Oh, right. where'd that weight yeah. come from, Cam? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just gonna. Ooh, okay. Naya, my favorite color combination. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you and I traded a little bit here. <laughs> Prep the wheel has spoken. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> They're like a cool deer, I think. Oh, I have those. <laughs> Boy, that wheel spinning was thrilling. But who the heck are we actually playing? Because I don't know. I have Prosper Tomebound. Uh, he's a 1-4 with Death Touch. Good, like that ability. And at the beginning of your end step, you exile the top card of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. And when you play a card from exile, you create a treasure token. That sounds fun. That sounds like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm rocking a Loro, and it's been a while since I've looked at this dude. Uh, I think it was like Eminence before Eminence. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain two life. Uh, whenever you gain life, you may pay one generic mana. If you do, draw a card and each opponent loses one life. Uh, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if a Loro Ageless Ascetic is in your command zone, you gain two life. Oh. So no matter what, I'm just going to gain life. It's a, it's a four or five giant. Yeah. I'd life gain, baby. <laughs> All right. I have Marath, Will of the Wild. Uh, Marath casts for Naya mana. They are an elemental beast. And when they enter the battlefield, uh, they do so with a number of plus one, plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana spent to cast it. So, three, five, seven. Um, for X, 
and remove x plus 1 plus 1 counters from Wrath, choose 1. Put x plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature, or Morath deals x damage to target creature or player, or put an xx green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. There are a few cards from the past that say creature or player that still just say creature or player, but this one, like most of them, now says any target. Do we have planeswalkers in our deck? I don't. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. All right. The last commander on the table is Azuri, Claw of Progress, a 4-mana 3-3 three, three elf warrior that says whenever a creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you get an experience counter. And I'll represent those in the command zone, I think. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on another target creature you control, where X is the number of experience counters you have. So these experience counters just grow throughout the game, and they're ones on me. So... There might be a few ways in the whole game to remove them. Azuri was like a big elf commander man, right? Yeah, Before... yeah, elf ball. yeah he well, he's yeah, this is Claw of Progress after he's been it... tainted by the Phyrexians, yeah, right? So so he's got infect. <laughs> Nelson's on infect! Yeah, that's we right. gotta kill him first. But I hey, mean all I see is elf in the command zone, and that that's yeah. that's that's public enemy number one. You two are both gonna draw cards and Cameron's <laughs> playing some kind of like I don't know deer. It, some sort of weird deer that turns in different shapes. I won the yeah. die roll. I'm going first. Let's <laughs> let's get this elf show on the road. Yeah. Okay, I'm drawing a card because it's a multiplayer game, and I have a Simic Guildgate. Your turn, Kathleen. Oh, oh. that's a powerful start. We're not going to see. I guess we're not going to see a lot of like soul soul ring into mana vaults into. <laughs> probably no mana vaults oh, in the I, decks, but yeah. there's there's a soul ring probably in everyone's deck. Uh, I'm gonna play a Tainted Peak. Go ahead. Okay. I will draw, as is my right. Uh, I'm going to crack this fetch. Uh, just kidding. It's an Evolving Wilds. <laughs> <laughs> counts. Uh, yeah, it counts. I'm going to crack it and uh, go grab a swamp and pass it to Mr. Cameron. All right. I will draw a card. I will put this new Banalia Ooh. into play tapped, as is my right. You'll and then see it. I will scry one. Well, Kathleen's the arch enemy because she had an untapped land to come in. Bottom. <laughs> How dare. It only makes colorless mana, though, right? Oh, so now Kathleen's got lightning bolt up. <laughs> well. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. What did we forget to do? Aloro's trigger. Oh, yeah, classic. Hey, it's yeah, been one she... turn cycle and we miss an upkeep <laughs> trigger. Let's put it on the People... stack now. Yeah, all right, great. I'm a gain two life for Aloro being in my command zone. I... I didn't even need to do anything. Sick. Go ahead, Nelly. <laughs> I liked my first turn so much, I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I gain one life because I have Thornwood Falls. Thank you. Your turn, Kathleen. Okay. I'm going to play this Rakdos Carnarium. <laughs> okay. And return the Tainted Peak. Hey. hey. Cards in hand? Uh, lots. One, two, three, four, uh, uh, eight. <laughs> uh oh. That's okay. <laughs> Luckily, red and black are not known for having graveyard graveyard interaction. That's yeah. true. So yeah. Whatever gets discarded here is probably gone forever. Uh, I'm gonna discard this chaos channeler. This is not very exciting. Go okay. ahead. All right. Uh, I will write my upkeep. Upkeep. Wow, this dude's sick. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Great. I'm gonna play the loneliest sandbar. My favorite uh, lonely island club. <laughs> Parody band. Good joke, Ben. Go ahead, Cam. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> that one's going to stick with me for a while. It's very, <laughs> very topical. <laughs> I put a forest into play, hmm. and I will say go. Okay. I don't gain two life in my upkeep. I'll play a forest. That's all right. You'll get there, buddy. Eventually, right? And then I'll say go. Oh. Man, I love pre-con magic. I'm right? like, we're just kind of hanging out and having a good time. This is This is super chill. A relaxing Sunday of Commander. And I'm going to use my now three mana to cast an unstable obelisk. Oh. Go uh, ahead. That's the thing that just blows everything up, right? For seven. Okay. One thing. One Destroy thing. target permanent. Oh, okay. It's not Evan yeah. Ural's disc. I thought it was like that, yeah. All right. It's not the perilous vault. Yeah, significantly less afraid. Okay. Hey, y'all. I'm going to play a spell this turn. <laughs> but first, <laughs> I'm going to gain nice. my two life from Aluro. I'll play a planes, get my natural esper going. Uh, and then play this pristine talisman. Oh, okay. I'm ramping, so I can tap it to add one to my mana pool, and I also gain a life. Unspoiled. This is a, kind of exactly uh, what I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. End of Ben's turn. I am going to activate the ability on Tranquil Thicket. Ah, cycling. Nice. And then I will... 
untap and draw. I'm going to play this mountain. Natural Naya. Marath. Whoa, the commander's coming out already. I would like a green die, please. Many of you will experience green die. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yikes. That's why they said they had to stop putting it in the rivers for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> they told us our waterways were safe. <laughs> uh, all right, that's my turn. Okay, I have an island. And I will cast Azuri, Claw of Progress. Back to you, Kathleen. Oh man, they're all coming out. Oh yeah, this is the hip turn to play your commander. Oh, mine cost six. <laughs> I'm trying. Sawi. I'm gonna play that Tainted Peak again. Bump, bump. Tainted Peak. Sometimes I feel I've got to bep, bep, scry away. <laughs> I'm going to cast this because I need to get it out of my hand realistically. Um, and I can't, can't do much. I'm going to cast uh, Phythus. 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 Phythus? There's no Y. I think it's Thysus. Thysus. Thysus? All right. Mostly to get it out of my hand. I'm going to cast Thysus. It is got, it's three black, 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 black. So I don't have that. But I can suspend it for one and a black. Uh, and it's got five suspend counters on it. And it just says destroy target creature. So in five turns, something has to die. Cool. The creature's controller loses some life, too. Yes. But who knows? Like, what's good? At the pace of this game, I might be getting a 2-2. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next thing I'm going to cast is Loyal Apprentice. And it says if I control my uh, commander on my turn, I get a colorless thopter. Uh, but I don't have that. But... This guy does have haste, and Ben, you have 46 life. Ah, this is unjust, but fair. <laughs> Actually, I feel bad. It's your turn. You should go back up to 46. Hey, oh, hey, yeah, you know what? Thanks for giving me that life back. That's great. It's sustainable. Yeah, yeah. Draw for the turn and play this island. Ethically sourced, sustainable beatdown. Nice work, Kathleen. <laughs> Uh, man, I also could have just tapped this for life, I realized. All right, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to actually use the talisman this time. I'm going to tap uh, and uh, gain a life. So I'm tapping for three to play this Azorius Herald, which is a 2-1 that can't be blocked, and when it enters the battlefield, I gain four life. And I have to sack it unless blue is spent to cast it, but the loneliest sandbar uh, did, a rip, uh, did, a, did, did a sweet set in the Azorius uh, Chancery, so uh, they get to hang out as a groupie. I'm going to pass to you. All right. I'm going to put this forest into play. Then I am going to... Ben, hold this, please. Wait, I don't want to. Oh, no. this, Curse of predation. This happened last time we did one of these. I actually, kept getting hold cursed. On. <laughs> hold on. I mean, actually, I am going to play this. The question is... What does it do? Curse of predation, two and a green, enchant player. Whenever a creature attacks enchanted player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Ooh. Ben's deck is old. <laughs> and thus, no good. <laughs> Kathleen's is so new and shiny. Yeah, it is. Look, her lands have flavor text on them. <laughs> and Nelson's playing Infect. I'm not playing Infect. I'm playing Experience Counters. Ah, tomato, tomato, right? Yeah, yeah. You're allowed to put it on yourself. I would argue that... <laughs> You've probably got something in there that steals plus one, plus one counters. Oh, I probably do. Ooh, intriguing. How else are we going to take away all of these life points that Ben keeps accumulating, if not with Predation Counters? Oh. I know. I hate this. Also, out of whatever, everyone who's got the ability to get rid of an enchantment, it is definitely a blue base deck. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but what about the green base deck? The green base deck's great at naturalizing things. That's true. You know, white. Oh, this. Ah! <laughs> uh, I mean, I can't play commander game on this channel without getting cursed. <laughs> uh, ben. Yeah. I attack you for four. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take that four. And, okay. uh... Go down to the ripe life total of 47. Okay. <laughs> Nelson, I will let you have a turn. Hooray. I like to play magic. I've got a forest. I'll spend five to cast Scythe Claw. This is a living weapon. Uh, I'll find the token for that. And the creature gets, the germ token gets plus one plus one. Also, whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. <laughs> Just in case anyone's on infinite life here, we can uh, we can turn it back down to half of infinite. Okay, my Azuri Claw of Progress triggers. So 
I'll take a, I don't know, white or blue dice. Thank you. So I have one experience counter because a creature with power two or less entered the battlefield under my control. Now I'd like to go to combat. I'll get a green die. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess he's going to gain some more life next turn. I guess I'll attack Ben for oh five. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll take five. Okay. 42. Love you, buddy. Yeah. Your turn, Kathleen. Oh. All right, well... This counts down. In four turns, something's gonna die. Out of curiosity, what is the germ's toughness? So right now it's just a 1-1. One, one. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna play a Foreboding Ruins, which comes into play tapped, but it's a land, so that's pretty awesome. Um, and then I'm gonna cast my commander. Ooh. So, hooray! Then I'm gonna go to my combat step. Oh, hey, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, I create a blend one colorless thopter artifact token with flying. That token gains haste until end of turn. How fun. And if I attack Ben, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. It sure does. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Come on in. All right. Hey, look, I'm at 40. Now everything's chill and cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now we're fine. We're yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> it honestly feels like maybe a bit bad that you're back to your starting life total. I mean, you know. <laughs> I hear something can uh, half that, too. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Okay, it's my end step, so that means Prosper Trigger. I get a bit blast off the top that is an exile. I can play it till the end of my next turn. Cool. Four damage to something and Cascade? Seems fine. Okay, I'm going to untap and gain two life. <laughs> and then, then she Cascaded. It's a Liliana of the Veil. <laughs> Nelson, what is the, how big is that germ thing that's going to start costing us half life? Or I guess it's, it's the equipment that's doing it, hey? Yeah, so whenever this equipment is attached to any creature, that creature gets plus one plus one. And if the creature deals combat damage to a player, then the player loses half their life. Hmm. Yeah, but right now this is just a one one. Hey, as I was reading Scytheclaw, I realized that my Azuri isn't allowed to target himself. And ah, I definitely did that last oh, turn. No. Why don't you gain a life from me attacking Zuri, and I'll just for say I forgot that counter. What if I don't gain the life, and y'all stop beating up on me? <laughs> <laughs> I really want you to gain the one life. All right, fine. No promises. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, all right, I'm just going to chill. Go ahead. All right. I remove a counter from Marath, and I shoot down the Loyal Apprentice. Ouch. Hateful. I like it. Yeah, seems good. I hear you get back counters really well, too. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've demonstrated a loop. <laughs> um, Rupture Spire. Enters the battlefield tapped. Sacrifice unless you pay one. Pass the turn. Okay, I wish to play a Moss Wart Bridge. This has Hideaway, so I'll look at the top four cards of my library and exile one of them face down. Sure. That one. These go on the bottom of my library. In any order. Now, if I have 10 or more power total on all of my creatures, I can tap it and pay a green and cast the spell for free. Seems good in a green deck, and probably not that hard to uh, get up to. Yeah, I'll go to combat. Azuri wants to put a counter on Scythe Claw, or the germ token, I guess. Uh, yeah. Actually, out of curiosity, yeah. what's the equip cost on Scythe Claw? Three. Three? Man, yeah. what a great card that is designed to like end commander games yeah it's, it's designed to end commander games it's a good way to kill people yeah. yeah um i will shoot the germ token in response the germ token i'll just respond with plax manta so what does that do so it's a 2-2 beast with flash and similar to azorius herald if green was spent um i don't have to sacrifice it and also, when Plaxmanda enters the battlefield, creatures I control gain Shroud until end of turn. Uh, so, so if this works, it's going to stop the counter from going on, too, because that's how Shroud works. Right, right. Sorry, but I'll cast Plaxmanta. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? That's fine. Yeah, You yeah, can respond again if you want yeah, to shoot it again shoot it down, if you but... want to, or you can let it be a 1-1. One, one. I think it's fine as a 1-1. One, one. Okay. This trigger's not going to resolve because of Shroud, but I get a second experience token because another... Creature with power two or less entered the battlefield. Spooky. So I have two experience. Distressing. Uh, but no plus one plus one counters this turn. 
Is there some sort of like deproliferate that you could use to get rid of experience counters? Attacking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you remove the player, all the counters are gone. That's true. All right. All right, Cameron, I'll attack you for four. For four, huh? Yes. Does he do anything if he connects? Just he's a commander and he's a 4 4. Yeah. Just the two triggered abilities that put in experience and plus one plus one counters. I think that's no probably other abilities. fine. To yeah. be honest, it's probably fine. I'll take four. Okay. Yeah, take four. You know, I don't want to say anything, Nelson, but I feel like you might be biased on whether or not uh, that matters. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I've got everyone's best interests interest in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Just take the damage from my attacking creatures. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Your turn, Kathleen. All right. Untap. Draw my card. I'm going to play a Smoldering Marsh, which comes into play tap because I don't don't have any basic land. I've got one. It's like turn one million of this game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Give or take. It's not the most instant spell, but I feel like I, I feel like I would be remiss not to cast this and get the treasure token mm -hmm. and just the value. Um, so I've got to blow something up. Um, I don't like your germ. Azuri okay. is pretty blow upable too. That's true. Yeah, I could just blow up Azuri because it's the 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 equipment is, that's the the spooky thing. That's true. Yeah. All right. I don't like Azuri. Well, that makes one of us. Zap. <laughs> Four damage to Azuri. Are you gonna Are you gonna cast? Are you gonna pay mana? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm gonna pay for it. Uh, there's five, and then many things are gonna happen before the bit blast resolves. First, I get a treasure token. Uh, then I'm gonna cascade. Cast a spell, exile cards so on top of your library until you ca exile a non-land card that cast less, and then I cast it for free. Piper of the Swarm. Ah, rats! I get another treasure token. Rats. Azuri takes four. All right, this goes away while well, this goes into my graveyard because it's been cast. Go, which means now I have more things to do on my end step. <laughs> oh. Apex of power. Exile the top seven cards of your library until end of turn. You may cast spells from among them. If this spell is cast from your head, add 10 mana of any color. I don't know if I have 10 mana. It's impressive looking. Uh, on, your, on your end step as well in response to that, I'm just going to tap this for a mana, but it does gain me a life mm -hmm. as well. Okay, it's my upkeep. I gain another two. Boy, is that keeping me in this game. Uh, all right. One of these days I'm going to draw my sixth land, but until then, no, I can't cast the spell either. Sure are a lot of double pips in this Esper land full of basics. <laughs> all right, well, I'm still waiting for another pip of mana of really any color, so I'm going to pass it to you. Hey, Cameron, before the end of Ben's turn, if you felt like shooting one of Kathleen's creatures, I could make sure that it has one toughness. Would you like that? I don't know if Kathleen's the threat. All right, well, you could kill Azorius Herald already, so you don't need my help with that. Truth. You know what? I think, I think the board situation looks stable. And as the regional superpower, <laughs> I think I've kept everyone in balance. Yeah, every, all things in balance as they should be. Totally fine. Yeah, I'm playing the um, the role of the UK in 20th century Europe here. 19th oh, century Europe. so eventually you're going to take us all over. Oh, no. no, 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 no. So you're going to be no. part of the game for a while and then decide you want to leave the game. Yeah. You're going to leave first is what you're saying. Okay, I'm fine with that. All right. Untap. Draw. Ben, Marath swings at you. Uh, yep. I will take how much this time? Three. Three! Oh, wait, that's commander damage. Yep. How many times have you hit me with this? Uh, this is the second time. Oh. Uh, so... How much commander damage am I at? Seven. Seven. Okay. <laughs> and I've taken four. And you've taken four from Azuri, too. Oh, man, all right. I sure hope someone's keeping track of this. I would like to cast Druidic Satchel. That's nice. an artifact. Two, tap, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put a plus one, plus one green sapperling creature into the battlefield. If it's a land card, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. If it's a non-creature, non-land card, you gain two life. Okay. Your turn, Nelson. Untap. I want to attack Ben and Cameron. So, Curse of Radiation trigger. I shoot the germ. Sure. That's fine. What is this, Manta? So it tries to be a 3-3 when it attacks you. Uh, yeah, but I'll take 3. If you want to respond, you can. No. Yep, yeah, it's just a 3-3. Back to 40. <laughs> okay, I shall recast my commander. 
Yes, I know I could have done that before combat. Your turn, Kathleen. All right. Ah, there's so many things happening on this turn. I'd like to think in this uh, European powers analogy, I'm going to call Poland. I don't know what Poland does in this. I think sits there and is large and maybe has something going on, but who knows? But in two turns, something is going to die. I didn't draw land, though, which is really... I really wanted that to happen. Things have been thought about. Ben, I'm going to attack you with this 2-2 two -two flyer. It's going to become a 3-3 three -three flyer. Yeah, I'll take three. Hooray! One, two, three. Then I am going to play... You know what? Why not? Six, seven. It's time for Lorcan, the Warlock Collector. Whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may pay life equal to its mana value. If you do, put it onto the battlefield under your control. It's a warlock in addition to his other types. Uh, I'm going to have to counter that. <laughs> that seems like a spooky friend. I'm going to cast Dromar's Charm, uh, choosing to counter target spell. <laughs> ah, well, that's okay. Uh, I can't cast Apex of Power, so that's actually going to be permanently exiled. Uh, but I do get another one because I'm going to my end step. Oh, it's a swamp. I'm going to play that? Uh, I think uh, I have to wait till next, next turn. turn. Next, next, next turn. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to tap this for a mana and a life on your end step and untippity tappity. Uh, and then I'm going to gain two life from Maloro and. Uh, okay. Uh, well. This is why I have to keep attacking you, is because I have to control the life total. <laughs> yes. I'm the villain of this story. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think of it as like just mowing the lawn, right? Like, I'm sorry, I'm weeding up the game. I just, uh, I just want to mow your life yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Just need a little trim. <laughs> Keep it neat. Um, take a little off the top there. Forty lungs tight. <laughs> Okay. I think what I'm going to probably do, I still can't honestly do much. I'm kind of land choked right now, which really sucks. So I'm going to play the Swift Foot Boots, uh, tapping this for one and gaining a life. Uh, and then I'm going to also play this Thopter Foundry. Uh, which is, I can pay one, sacrifice a non-token non -token artifact to make a Thopter, and I would gain a life. And I'm going to continue to big chill. Okay. Pass to you, bud. I can guarantee you, or I, I hope, that sort of the Meek is not in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel that we've been kind of picking on Ben a little bit. Um, so I probably deserve it. I mean, truth. <laughs> But I'm going to cast Curse of Chaos. Here, hold this for me. Whenever a player attacks Enchanted Player with one or more creatures, that attacking player may discard a card. If that player does, he or she draws a card. Ah, so yeah. you get to rummage if you attack me. That sounds pretty but great. But just once per combat. Yeah. One or more creatures. Is I dig it. Whereas this one is every creature, right? Whenever a creature attacks me, yep. Right. All right. Ben, I'm going to attack you with Morath. I gotta let it through. I take one, two, three. Yep, yeah, so that's three more commander damage. Yep, I'm at ten. Ugh. Yes. Uh, go. That's fine, it's not even half. Patagia Viper. Flying 2 1 green snake that says uh, bring two more 1 1 green and blue snake creature tokens to the battlefield and sacrifice this unless blue was spent to cast it, but we spent blue. So three triggers for Azuri's. Experience counters. And I'll find some snakes. What do the experience counters do again? They turn into a plus one plus one counter every turn that this is on the battlefield. Okay. Is that all right? Hey, hey, hey I cursed him. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, so then I want to attack. Mm -hmm. I get an Azuri trigger. I'll put. Um, Five more counters on Plax Manta, I guess. Thunk. And then... Sure, Cameron, I'll attack you with Plax Manta, and Ben, I'll attack you with Azuri. How big is Azuri? Well, there's the Curse Predation trigger. Mm -hmm. So if that's okay, it's a 4-4. Four four. All right, I'm going to activate Druidic Satchel. Okay. I'm going to spin the bag. 
Um, Spin that bag. Reveal the top card of your library. Oh, Ooh. hey, mail. It's hey, a anima. Uh, I get a one-one green sapperling. Nice. Okay. Who I believe in very much, and will get in front of the Plax Manta. I have a feeling that I got to stop just taking commander damage, so I'll I'll block with the Azorius Herald. Sure. Um, that's great. That's my turn. Go ahead, Kathleen. All right. Pachunk. All right, I gotta play this from exile right now. Get a treasure token. Nice. Yeah. Draw my card for the turn. I just realized finally I have an actual like basic swamp. <sighs> Congratulations. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, using that swamp, I'm gonna cast Gaunti, Lord of Luxury. Oh yeah. Ooh. Can I see your deck, Nelson? Can I, I see the top four cards of your deck? I didn't know we were playing with power. <laughs> All right. Uh, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library. Exile one of them face down and then put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order. This one is going to get exiled. Yeah. Those can go at the bottom of your library. Sweet. And then I can cast, you may look at that and cast that card for as long as it means exile and spend any and mana of any mana as the or any type to cast that spell. I'm going to cast it right now. I'm going to make a treasure token because I cast Ooh, the Cold Selkie. Selkie. Yeah, Island Walk. Stealing Island Walk with Gaunty. I love it. Uh, and now whenever it draws combat damage to a player, I can draw that many cards. It has to deal combat damage, but it has Island Walk. So Still. Yeah. All right. It's one of the more upsetting card arts ever. I like him. Yeah, well, oh yeah, no, it's it's good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It's just like a distressing image. Yeah, it's like Shape of the Water. Yeah. Only well, yeah. Yeah. It's exactly like Shave of the Water. <laughs> We're not going to judge what you do in your own time. Don't worry. <laughs> Technically, this is all our time. <laughs> uh, I feel like I have made enemies, so I'm going to keep making enemies, and I'm going to attack... Let's see. These guys have summoning sickness. This is... Uh, I'm going to attack... Ben, because I want a token. <laughs> You want to counter? I want to counter for four for four damage. Go Thirty-four. Ahead. Okay, uh, untap, upkeep, gain two. <sighs> All right, we got the sixth land. I get to play my commander. Hey, hey everybody's showing up. All right. Uh, so I gain one life because I'm using the talisman uh, to cast it. Uh, and uh, yeah, now now Alora's here. He's just a 4-5 that hopefully is going to get in the way of things. Um, Azuri's got to die. <laughs> yeah, I'll, probably, uh, yeah. Pass the turn. <laughs> okay. In, in Ben's end step, I wish to cast Rapid Hybridization targeting Marath. Ooh. So this says destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. That creature's controller gets a 3-3 frog. Okay. Uh, in response, I would like to remove a token or a counter from Marath and shoot the, uh, the, 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 the Viper. You got it. There you go. Ooh. Man. I can't believe Azuri gives out counters equal to the experience counters. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, he's pretty big. So is Crater Hoof, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Marath! I mean, what if you ephemerate the Crater Hoof and then momentary blink it? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. What if I simply... What if I simply did nothing? You want to rummage? I kind of want to rummage. Do you want to rumble? I want to do both. Mm. Luckily, I have the technology to do exactly that. Yeah, it's pretty sick that rummaging and rumbling is not a binary option. Yeah, yeah. They exist along different axes. Just click your macro that says rummage and rumble. Yeah. Hmm. No. In fact, I've weighed the options and decided the correct way is to do nothing. We found out that who's Sweden now actually at the table. <laughs> Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, depending on which century we're in, like the Swedes could actually be pr pretty big and bad. There's a distinct part of the audience that got very upset about that. <laughs> okay, I wish to go to combat. We are wishes granted. I need another dice. Now remember that I granted it. Green. And green not attack me. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'm just going to leave green d6s over on your sure. side of the table. Okay, I'll put five plus one plus one counters on this snake. And then I'll attack. I definitely want to attack 
Ben with Azuri to get the Curse of Predation counter on Azuri. What does that make it? A 5-5. Five, five. I'll, I'll attack Cameron with the Plax Manta again. And yeah, sure. Kathleen, I'll attack you with a 6-6 six, six Snake. A 6-6 six, so, six Snake? I don't know. Roar. <laughs> Roar. Well, I am not blocking <laughs> with Aluro at the moment he gets here, so I guess I'm taking five, sure. five more commander damage. Uh, you know what? I ain't hurt. I can take the Plax Manta hit. Great. I'm gonna just take six. Awesome. Great game. That's not what I thought was gonna happen there, but that's okay. I'm fine. Let's... Did you expect us to chump, or...? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, not you. <laughs> not me. Let's cast this spell so that we cast spells. It's Desert Twister. It can destroy any permanent. Oh. I'll choose to destroy my Cold Eye Selkie. You know, I wanted to use that Selkie against you to draw cards. Also, before I take my turn, I forgot my Prosper trigger. So, uh, Talisman of Indulgence is what I had there. Cool. Okay. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Seems like uh, you're going to cast a mana rock that gives you a mana rock. Yeah, <laughs> that seems fine. All right, uh, are you done? Go ahead. Oh, look at that. The Thytus is here. Oh, the Itis. <laughs> the Itis. Azuri. Sure. So what happens? Uh, destroy a target creature. Its controller loses life equal to its power plus its toughness. Sure. I'll lose 10 life. Woo! Oh, that even things up. Quite yeah, awesome. look at those nice even life totals. I like how you have the talisman of, oh, here, honey, do you want some mana and some life? And I have the talisman of, go to your room. <laughs> I mean, does go to your room even work on kids these days? I'm sure they have, like, a whole game system and, like, a fo I sound a million right now. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. stop. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm, like I'm turning 30 this year, and it's like, I, I, I'm already seeing the tension come in. Do you remember in, like, middle school, when being told to put your head on your desk stopped being like the most crushing thing a teacher could do to you and was like, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. The coolness of the wood. Yeah. The uh, the smell of the, 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 the oak against yeah. your face. The laminate. Your annoying friends not looking at you anymore. Yeah, yeah. and it was just nap time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. When you got to play 7-Up and just go to sleep. Yep. Yeah. Anyhow. I'm surprised we're not playing 7-Up right now. Okay, while well, you guys are having a nice nap, um, I haven't drawn my card for the turn, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to play my land. I'm going to play my Talisman of Indulgence. I'm going to make a treasure. All right, now what do I want to actually do for the turn? Nelson, brrr, I'm going to fly at you, and then I'm going to attack you with this 2-3, uh, I'm sorry, this 3-4 Death Toucher. Mm. You may also discard a card to draw a card if you want. Oh, that's very exciting. I think I'm actually good. Okay. I'm going to take the three. Okay. I'll take four. Thank you. It's time for the Throws of Chaos! Yay! All right. All Cascading. Right. So when I cascade, when I, so I'm just going to do it for four. So there we are. I get a dead man's chest. Enchant creature and opponent controls. When enchanted creature dies, exile cards equal to its power from the top of its owner's library. You may cast spells from among those cards for as long as they remain exiled. Ooh. The Plax Man does an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, this is the biggest creature. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the biggest creature right here. Okay. Mm. And I get a treasure token for doing that because it came from thing. Yeah, I think I'm good for the turn. And then that means I'm going to do my Prosper Trigger now. Go ahead. All right, you got the mountain. Uh, I will untap. I will gain two from Aloro. Uh, I have a trigger uh, that whenever I gain life, I can pay one. And if I do, I draw a card and everybody loses a life. So I'm going to use my talisman to do that. Gaining a life, everybody's going to take one damage and I'm going to draw a card. There's also, because I'm getting life out of the talisman, another instance of that. So I'm actually going to use, yeah, this lonely sandbar uh, and do that again. So we all take another, lose another life? Yes, everybody loses another life and I draw a card. Everybody's been tossing around these curses for the last little bit, so I'm going to play my curse. Ooh. Uh, and I believe there's two people who haven't been cursed, right? Kathleen and Cameron. Yes. And Nelson. And oh, I've been no, cursed. Nelson. Kathleen and Nelson have not been cursed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tap for three. I'm going to say... I mean, you put this evil on me. What is evil? 
<laughs> evil is cursing you with Curse of Inertia, which is whenever a player attacks an enchanted player with one or more creatures, uh, the attacking player may tap or untap a permanent of his or her choice. Ooh. So it is to be war between us. It was the turn three, Cameron. <laughs> I will not forget this. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to my commander, damage like total. Uh, all right, I'm going to attempt to equip these booties onto Aloro mm -hmm. uh, to give it hexproof and haste, and I'll say go. Okay. I am going to cast Gaji, Honored One. Whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalker an opponent controls, that creature gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. It's a good way to counter a curse. Yeah. Uh, in which case, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have a... Uh, Marath is a 6-6 six, six, mm -hmm. and the frog lizard. May I get another die, please? Oh, thank you. No is a 4-4. Four, 6-4 four. Four and 8-6 due to Gaji. Oh! Ones. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, I'm going to tap for one, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to uh, activate Thopter Foundry, uh, actually sacking itself to it. Okay. Uh, making a 1-1 one, one Thopter, and I gain a life. Before blockers, I shoot the Thopter. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> so that is a 5-5? Five, 7-5, five? Seven, five, six, due to the triggers from Gachi. Okay, so 13 damage? Yep. One, two, three, four, I go down to 20, and I think I'm at 17 commander damage. Okay. Go. So whenever I attack you with a creature, I get to tap or untap something. Yep. Yep. Anything. You could murder him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could kill. You could kill. Them. Do it, coward. <laughs> This is that moment where like I come in as the shoulder devil yeah. and you expect Cam or Kathleen to show up as the, the angel, but Cameron's just another devil. Yeah. <laughs> just get me. I think if somebody's shoulder devil comes up and they're like, yes, hurt me. I wouldn't though. I'd yeah. be like, actually no. Yeah, yeah. Be like, you know, you're just outside sitting on the curb later. You have a cigarette out of nowhere and you're like, that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'll attack Cameron with the Plax Manta and Kathleen with the snake token. And with my one tap on tap trigger, I will tap Prosper. Is that okay? Is it, am I allowed to tap like something that someone else controls? Yes. Whenever yep. a player attacks cool. an enchanted player with one or more creatures, that attack player may tap or untap a permanent of his or her choice, of their choice. I take it. Great. It's eight damage. I'm going to make a rat. <gasps> Powerful. The rat blocks. Sure. It's going to be like, surely that rat will be long lived and prosperous. <laughs> Okay, I have a sweeper of a sort. It's Bane of Progress. So, when this enters the battlefield, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Bane of Progress for each permanent destroyed this way. If you want, so he doesn't get a bajillion counters, you can just crack your treasure for yeah, mana before it happens. Yeah. 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 Wow. You can just make mana before the ability resolves so it doesn't get even bigger. Okay, well, I'm going to crack six treasure. <laughs> Sweet. For no value. I have three hits for it. I also have three hits. I have one, two, three, four hits from it. Okay, so four plus my one scythe claw, so 11 counters. Can I borrow that d12? It's uh, 1313 13, Bane of Progress. Your turn, Kathleen. Yeah, it took me a very long time to get all those treasures, Nelson. Very thoughtless of you. Yeah. yeah. So rude. What can I say? They put Bane of Progress in my deck. <laughs> I'm going to play... The mountain from Prosper's Exile and get a treasure token. <sighs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. Dance Macabre. Each player sacrifices a non-token creature. Then I roll a d20 and, and add the toughness of the creature I sacrificed this way. I'm going to sacrifice Piper of the Swarm. I will sacrifice Aloro. <laughs> I will sacrifice Morath. I will sacrifice Plax Manta. This isn't so bad for some of you guys, I think. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> 
I what, mean, what no happens on the die roll? <laughs> no statements universal. What happens on the die roll is between 1 and 14, I return a creature card put into the graveyard uh, this way to the battlefield under my control. And if I get more than 15, I get two of them. So you add the toughness? I add the toughness. Of just her of, creature. Of, of my creature. So ah. that's uh, three. Uh, well, I get one creature back under my battlefield under my control. But I think... I'm, I sacrificed my commander. I, take yeah, my, I sacrificed the commander. So. I'm going to take my Piper of the Swarm back. All right. Hooray. Okay. I feel like that was like somewhat helpful, but maybe not 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that really just screwed Ben. Sorry, Ben. Super helpful, Kathleen. You <laughs> murdered our stuff. We really appreciate it. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pay one, and I'm going to cast Warlock class. At the beginning of my end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. It's my end step, so that means Prospero, ah, another land. That's fine. That's fine. And you know what? Was that the most roundabout way to drain every to get everybody to lose one life? Yes. 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 It works. Uh, all right. I'm gonna untap. Uh, I gain a life or two life, no matter where Loro be. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to play this Transguild Promenade, uh, which enters tapped, and I'll tap a land so it doesn't uh, instantly go away. I There's a very good chance I'm just dead, uh, but I will play Kong Ming, the Sleeping Dragon, uh, which is a lord for all my creatures, um, but it is actually just a 2-2, so I maybe live a turn <laughs> and uh, pass. All right. All the curses are gone. Draw. At least. Yep. They are. Um, I am going to enter a new phase of peace and prosperity and cast Mael, the Anima. Mm. She's a 2-3 Elf Shaman for 3 generic, plus Naya, plus Tap. Look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may put a creature card with power 5 or greater from among them onto the battlefield with the rest of them the bottom of your library in any order. I think I'm... yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay, sure. Let's pay 8 for Azuri. <laughs> And go to combat. Mm -hmm. I'll make this snake get bigger. It's a bigger snake now. Um, Kathleen, I'll attack you with these two six six snakes. And sure, Cameron, I'll a block. <laughs> attack you with this thirteen thirteen bane of progress. I believe in this frog lizard. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good job. In that I lizard. believe it is dead. <laughs> right. Um, I'm gonna put Gonti in front of one of them. You got it. And I will take the other six. One, two. Pass. Goodbye, Gonti. All right. I feel like without all the treasure and stuff around, it's actually much more simple and nice around here. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> without all this extra mana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that time I made you all sacrifice a creature. I was helping you to tidy your board up. Yeah. <laughs> um. Draw my card for the turn. Get a treasure. All right. What do I want to do here? First, I think I'm gonna make Warlock class level two, which means I get to look at the top three cards of my library, put one into my hand and put the rest into my graveyard. I get to put this one into my hand and put Rakdos Charm and Mortuary Mire into my graveyard. Then I think it is time to... Wow, I have nothing that can attack. That sucks. <laughs> I mean, you could attack with Prosper. I could attack with Prosper. You can attack with Piper the Storm if you want. Yeah. Yeah. I don't actually, I, you know, maybe it's time to play a creature. I think that might be the actual, like, solution here. That's five. I'm going to play a Death Tyrant, and it's got Menace, and it's got a negative energy cone, which means whenever an attacking creature you control or a blocking creature an opponent controls dies, I get a zombie. Seems good. Oof. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to say go. All right. Don't uh, forget your Prosper trigger. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's another land. Sick. Yeah, I mean, I want that good. problem to yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'll level with you. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna untap on my upkeep. Uh, I gain two from Aloro. This man's is keeping me in this. I want to shout out to Aloro. Uh, drawing for the turn. Uh, oh, well, that was a good draw. I don't know if I can play it. Um, because then people will kill me. Uh, I'm gonna play Shroom the Hegemon. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and I would. Probably, I should probably pay the correct mana to do that. Uh, let's do this. Boink. Uh, and uh, when they enter the battlefield, I can uh, return target artifact card from my graveyard to the battlefield. So in this case, I'm thinking... Mm, I mean, Thopter Foundry is pretty good, but I think I'm going to go with the Pristine Talisman. 
Is there like a scary threat on the board? Uh, the Bane of Progress is kind of just a huge thing. Yeah, I mean, I have Azuri making small creatures big. Kathleen has a Death Tyrant and a Prosper. What if I... Both of Cam's creatures are kind of neat. Don't hurt anybody. We'll still attack you to death. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're, pa we're past <laughs> that point. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Um, well... <laughs> To be perfectly honest, you're standing between us and lunch. Ah. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> I mean, we all are. Because yeah, really. you asked. <laughs> okay, well, Cameron, uh, I'm going to turn my L into a bug. Uh, they're now a zero one one insect. I'm going to gain a life from Pristine Talisman. Uh, here, there you go. Okay. You always wanted an indestructible blocker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I've merely helped you. Yeah, that bane of progress don't look so scary now, does it? <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Cam. Uh, end of your turn, I'm going to cycle this Crows and Tusker. Mm -mm. So I get to draw a card, and then when I cycle Crows and Tusker, I may search my library for a basic land card, reveal that card, put it into my hand, and then shuffle my library. Biggest piggus. And then I reveal this mountain, which I put into my hand, and I shuffle my library. Untap. Draw for the turn. I would like to put... Wow, I have so many cards in hand. I would like to play this... Mountain, and then I would like to use the mountain to cast Sol Ring. Hey, buddy, you're only twelve turns late. Yeah. <laughs> um. He's got a Sol Ring. Get him. <laughs> yep. It's turn forty-five, and I'm ramping. Marath enters the battlefield for uh seven? five seven. All right, back on the battlefield. Go. I'll cast Simic Signet, and then. I'll cast Prime Speaker Zagana. Ah, she's big. It's a merfolk wizard that's a 1-1 one, one for 6, but with 2 abilities. She enters with X plus 1 plus 1 counters, equal to, where X is equal to the greatest power among other creatures I control. Mm -hmm. And uh, when this enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. Do the counters come on as a, an ability, or are they already on when she enters? Right, so the first ability is a replacement effect. Okay. So you can respond to this by like nuking my other creatures or countering it. But if she's allowed to resolve, she enters with, with. the okay. number of counters equal to the greatest power among other creatures I control. So you're about to draw, what is it, thir uh, f 14 cards is what I'm going Sick. for here. I do have four in my hand and no reliquary tower, but, you know, I'll get some looting. Does anyone want to do anything? I got nothing, man. Resolves. Right, yeah, so Marath here with for one mana could, could ping if it worked the other way, right? Yep. Okay, drawing 14. This is fine. Yeah, yeah. It's probably not a big deal. It's what? a pre-con commander deck. I mean, what's the likelihood that there's going to be good cards in a Simic deck, right? Just make sure I did that right. When was the Simic deck published? <laughs> Are we dealing with 2020 green cards <laughs> yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that's a good one. That's not a good sign. Okay, I will play Island Thought Vessel. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Let's go to the Azuri step. Uh -huh. Seems good. Can I borrow another die? <laughs> how about just... Sure. Oh wait, how about blue? That's your second Okay, sure, color. my second color is blue. Let me get you good. lots of dice as well. Just, you know. Okay, I'll put another five counters on this snake. And then Cameron has an indestructible blocker. And Kathleen has lots of life points. Sure, Kathleen, let's attack you with the main of progress on the snake token. Hellish Rebuke? Until end of turn, permanent so you're with your opponent's control gain. When this permanent deals damage to the player who cast... Hellish Rebuke, uh, sacrifice this permit, you lose two life. Okay. So. Do you want to take 24? Do I want to take. No, I probably don't, but I also. I want to block the bigger one with Prosper. Sure. Uh, and then I'll take. 11. 11. Cool. And, and then. It'll die. Th these three all die. And I'll lose two life as well. I feel like you and I in that scenario were just like the people from Captive Audience. <laughs> you're yeah, just sort of just watching like, it. You're just like, oh god. They're just really happy to not be a part of it. Yeah, there's just like a, a blood drop like running down my head. Like, it, it's not mine. Yeah, really excited that we got the Splash Zone tickets for this yeah, one. Yeah, for this exactly. Rakdos Carnarium. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Gore Guard really what does work. <laughs> I have to untap all my land and draw for the turn. And then, you know what, I will play it. Waste not, want not. Consuming vapors. Sure, I'll sacrifice Azuri. All right. You gain three life. One, two, three. All right. And then that goes into exile. 
I can cast it again. Oh, -hoo. Ooh. oh man, rebound's so sick with Prosper. Yeah, actually. Wow. I don't actually have anything really else to do, so I'm going to retrace Throws of Chaos. Yeah! So that goes into the permanently exile. No, 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 it no, doesn't. It just goes to the stack. It just goes to the stack? It doesn't... Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. wow. Just has retrace, yeah. Cool. All right, I'm going to discard this basic land, and then I'm going to get stuff off the... I'm going to pay four, for it. Yeah. And I'm going to get stuff off the top. Nope. 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 Uh, I think I it's less than. It has to be less than. Less than. Yeah. All right. Nope. Hey! It's a shiny impetus. Hmm. This it's, one's fun. It's, uh, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. It attacks each combat is able. It attacks a player other than you if able. Who would you like to goad? I would like to goad this creature. Yeah, <laughs> that seems good. Yeah. It's goated. It's a really big dude. It's large. And now it can't attack She's... me. <laughs> That's She's 14, 14? To... Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Legal to... It doesn't have trample? Get their learner's permanent in Alberta. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. No. Well, yeah, less no. worried now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I gave you the perfect blocker. Thank you. Yeah, it was a gift. It was a gift of peace, Cameron. I appreciate it. You'll notice I have not attacked you in several turns. Yeah, I made it through a whole turn cycle. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to my end step. I don't have anything to exile with Prosper for once because he's not here, but I do have a trigger on Warlock class. So y'all lose one life. Out. Else. I'm going to untap. I'm going to gain two from Aloro and draw. Uh, I'm going to play this planes. I'm going to tap for four and play Well of Lost Dreams. So whenever I gain life, I can pay X, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life I've gained. And if I do, I draw the, that amount of cards. And then in response, I'm scared. <laughs> can that go on the can it be known that that's on the stack that i'm i'm feared <laughs> what do we got here response yeah. <laughs> there's some menace things that thing is large i stifle ben's fear yeah <laughs> oh thank god is that all i needed <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. all this time yeah um nope i'm just gonna continue just uh do a big chillin all right and pass Untap. Draw. You know what? Maybe we've entered a, a period of rebuilding here. <gasps> yes! Um, I'm going to cast Deadwood Tree Folk. They're a 3 6. They're vanishing. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're going back to wherever Tree Folk come from. They're vanishing from this world. You know, we tell a lot of jokes here on Loading Ready Run, but the, the Tree Folk are dying. <laughs> Consider donating to your local Tree Folk fund. When they enter the battlefield or leave the battlefield, Return another target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. I return Crows and Tusker. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, thank Value. you. Value. Um, could I get a white die, please? I'm going to give you two just in case. Thank you. All right. And Vanishing, just to remind myself, Vanishing is at the beginning of upkeep, and when the last is removed, sacrifice it. Seems good. Okay. Because fading was, if you cannot remove a fade encounter, because we needed both of those mechanics in the game. Go. Yeah, that's why first strike turned into double strike, and flying turned into um, space exploration, and eventually trample will just turn into like this creature attacks your opponent from your deck. Mm -hmm. You just first flick it right strike. in their forehead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first to strike, yeah. Okay, I have a command beacon, which I might later use to save some mana. Uh, do I want to cast anything before combat? What if you I think so. don't fight? It, it's <laughs> I, gotta fight. I've gotta go. Yeah. On Cameron's what turn, I was What caused it to go, be this way? Right? Yeah. She got bullied in high school. Oh, hell yeah. Then beat him up, sister. <laughs> Prime Speaker Zagana is really sick of trying to have to write uh, funding proposals. Yeah. Can I read this? Prime Absolutely. Prime Speaker okay. Zagana has decided to clear her calendar permanently. <laughs> All right. I'll attack Cameron with Prime Speaker. You get a treasure. I will block with Mael the animal. Oh, he was looking at the card. Maybe he's got a thing against it. I have Snake Form, which I believe makes Dark Steel Mutation stop working. Uh, it makes the creature lose all abilities until end of turn. And I'm pretty sure that means that 
indestructible will no longer work, and it'll be a 1-1. One, one. Well, in that case... He's more judgy than the rest of us, so... Yeah, I'm inclined I mean, to I'm, believe yeah, the judgment. I, believe... I think this is how this works. It's a little confusing, but yeah. basically, this one says lose all the abilities more recently than that one says gain indestructible. Uh, new is yeah. always better. <laughs> My right. elf turns from a beetle into a snake, and the last thing she says before getting crushed by Prime Speaker Zagana is, Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> I'll draw a card from snake form. Okay, let's cast Experiment 1. This ah, is a human ooze with evolve. This is about the time that you want that card to come Wait, out. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> to piggyback Cameron's soul ring from two turns ago, right? Yeah. Uh, then I'll cast. Where were you? Right. I'll cast Chameleon Colossus. So this has protection from black, and it's a four-four with all creature types. And for four man, I can pump it, but it'll trigger evolve here. Uh, it would. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. You gonna respond? Yeah, I shoot experiment one. That's fine. Before he gets the counter? Yep. I'll cast Kodama's Reach. There's Thanks, any, Kodama. If there's any basic lands left in my deck, I'll go get them. Truly the giving tree of magic. <laughs> <laughs> Which Kodama is it? Do you think that helps out? Because there's four, right? There's five. There's five. Kodama. Right, because there's that denser tree. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think the Kodama spirit can reach into all the corners of... Uh, it's whatever... It's Kamigawa, right? Yeah, it's whatever spirit needs something from the top shelf. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I feel like the West is the most recent one, right? It seems like the shortest of them. Okay, go ahead, Kathleen. All right. Uh, at the end of your turn, I'm going to make a rat. Oh, Kodama, it does not matter who... Whoever's available. <laughs> Just like whoever you got on hand, my guy. Yeah. Kodama of the earliest availability. <laughs> Kodama of the... My schedule's clear. <laughs> oh, did Death Giant Tyrant make you a zombie when my AL died? I... Oh, a blocking creature and opponent controls. Yes, it yeah. does. Okay, cool. All right, it finally paid off. Yeah. And consuming vapors at the beginning of my upkeep. <clears throat> I've untapped my land, though. Um, some Somebody's got to sacrifice a creature. Who's it going to be? Um, Nelson is going to have to oh, sacrifice a creature. Yeah. Gain 14 life. <laughs> the way you phrased it, I thought you were like, it was like an open for discussion. Like, who's going to take <laughs> one for the team? <laughs> it's like, someone's got to do it. Yeah, kind of. I mean, that's what Not happened. Me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Dibs out. <laughs> oh, well, you heard, you heard Ben and Cameron. They called Dibs I out. <laughs> put Mom, I sacrificed a creature last time. <laughs> All right. Well, that worked out well. Um, Okay. Let's see what's going on here. I gotta draw my card for the turn. I gotta play a Pontiff of Blight. Whenever you cast a spell, you may pay uh, white black. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain that much life. Seems good. That's a gooder. That's a decent, decent, decent dude. And he's a 2 7, so he blocks so amazingly well. Ah, uh, exploits. <laughs> Is that what they called it? Extort, yeah. Extort. So oh, it's so extort. it's Pontiff of Blade it has extort, extort, and then all of your other creatures have extort as well. Yes. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, I can't recast Prosper with extort, and I played my land for the turn, so I can't even do anything. I just have to have this two seven here. Bummer. Bummer, eh? <laughs> so rude. Um, but my rats have menace. Attack Nelson for two. I lose two life. Got him. Yep. Zoot zoot. Gaji triggers. Each of those rats gets plus two plus oh. Okay, I take six. Yikes! Prosper is here. I am completely tapped out, but on the end, at the beginning of my end step, many things happen, including I send another land to the exile zone. That's cool, that's cool. Um, and uh, because a uh, creature died, because Prime Speaker Zanaga's schedule was terminally cleared, everybody loses a life. Okay. Hmm. Boink. All right. On your end step, uh, I, I just realized how cool this is. I'm going to tap the Pristine Talisman, which gets me a mana and a life, which triggers Well of Lost Dreams, which means I can pay a uh, that exact mana that I got to draw a card off of it for gaining one life. So that's a nice little combarino. Uh, I'm going to untap, uh, and now I gain two life off of Valoro. I'm going to do that thing again. Uh, and pay two mana and draw two cards from Well of Lost Dreams. Whew, okay, I've got spells and things to play. Uh, I'm going to play the Swamp. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring back Eloro, which this in this case is going to cost me all the mana. 
so eight. Uh, I gain a life. I have no more mana to, to put into Well of Lost Dreams, but I think three is enough cards drawn. Uh, and uh, play him there. That's me. Go ahead, Cam. All right. End of turn. I activate Crows and Tusker, and I go searching for a basic land. We've been here before. I find this forest. Then I shuffle my deck, and then I will draw a card for cycling. What a friendly little loop. Yeah. You're going to get to do it again later with the moon folk. Or the tree, tree folk. folk. Yeah. Before, when they go into the west. <laughs> How do you think they reforest a tree folk forest? Like, because, like... Is it like where pandas, you got to coax them into, you know? Yeah. <laughs> How are... You got to read the flavor text of Iron Root Tree Folk. How are Tree Folk formed? <laughs> How is Sapling formed? <laughs> How is well, Sapling formed? Mommy, where do Tree Folk come from? <laughs> Out, yeah, outside... Well, I mean, outside of, like, the colloquial beam, I genuinely, like, are they birds? Are they from eggs? Do they grow out of the ground? Surely I... they're seedlings, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Do, but, like, do they drop off? I mean, yeah, do they root? I. Hmm. Weird. I just don't want to go into one of them forests in the springtime. I'm texting Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Untap. Oh, wait. I still draw a card for cycling because I have not done that. And I draw a card for the turn. I play this perfectly normal forest. And then I look at what I drew for the turn. You got a vanishing trigger. Oh, I do too. Okay. I am going to cast Where Ancients Tread. Whenever a creature with power 5 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may have where Ancient's Tread deal 5 damage to target creature or player. Sick. <laughs> um, wow. Nelson. Yeah. Deadwood Tree Folk attack you. They are currently a 5-6. No blocks. Okay. I'm going to tap... Really? This thing's 4? <laughs> There you go. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> All right, sure. Spellbreaker Behemoth. Uh, Spellbreaker Behemoth can't be countered. Creature spells you control with power five or greater can't be countered. It is a five five. Um, so it triggers where ancients tread, which does five damage to you know, Prosper. And then I will say go. Okay, so. Iron Root Tree Folk actually has this exact uh, wording. The the mating habits of tree folk, particularly the stalwart Iron Root Tree Folk, are truly absurd. Molasses comes to mind. It's amazing the species can survive at all, given such protracted periods of mate selection, conjugation, and gestation. I never want molasses to come to mind when thinking about, you know what? I retract my question. <laughs> Perfect. Too late. The literal nut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll attack Come Kath on, don't... <laughs> yeah, no, it was fine. It was fine. What but are you doing? I'll attack Kathleen with Chameleon Colossus. I'm gonna block with the zombie. You sure aren't. Um, Gaji makes it 6-4. Uh, this creature has protection from black. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, maybe you should have uh, not been killing me so much last turn. I'd like to double and then triple and then, I don't know, put its power to a million. Oh. What, what is its power? Okay, so if nobody does anything, it's a 6-4, so I'll make it a 12. Uh, it gets plus X plus X, so what is this? 6-4, but it gets plus 6 plus 6, so it's a 12-10, and then I'll make it a 24-20, or 24-22, is that right? And then I'll try to make it a 48. You've got a little bit of Kathleen on you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, we're in danger. <laughs> Secure a tribe elder. Good luck with Go bad. Does it get trample? It's just got pro just black, pro right? Black. Okay. It just has pro black. Oh, my God. It has all creature types. Steve, that's a legacy playable. <laughs> get him. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, after that, um, I'm going to untap. I'm going to gain two. Uh, and off of Well of Dreams, I'm going to actually tap for two to draw two, and then draw for my turn. Ooh. All right, so we got to deal with things. I mean, I guess the chameleon's like not the scariest in the world. Yeah, it needs like a billion mana to activate three times. Mm. And where is it going to get yeah. a billion mana? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah. 
Uh, I'm a little afraid of it though, because it's got pro black. Like it doesn't affect you as much. I'm gonna play this Opal Palace just for some of the mana. And I'm gonna play a card I've actually never seen before. <laughs> Shockingly, considering this deck came out forever ago. Uh, it's Act of Authority. So it's an enchantment that when it enters the battlefield, I may exile target artifact or enchantment. And at the beginning of my upkeep, I may exile a target artifact or enchantment. And if I do, it's controller gains control of active authority. Huh. It's a really interesting one, yeah. Uh, I'm going to get rid of where ancients tread. No. I think this, it seems a little busted. Oh. Okay. So that goes into the exile land. Bye. <laughs> uh, I've been and, staring at you since turn one. <laughs> And then I think I'm going to go ahead and tap Pristine Talisman for one gaining a life and using that to draw myself a card. Uh, and then I'm going to play this Disciple of Grizzlebrand that I just uh, drew, mm. which seems all right. But it can't block the Chameleon Colossus. No, Kong Ming can, and I guess I'm hoping that he doesn't die. So go. End of turn. I'm going to move one counter from Marath onto um, Gaji. Untap, vanishing, one turn left on the Tree Folk. I draw a card for the turn. For six, I will cast Crater Hellion. Woo! Uh, it is a 6-6. Six, six. When Crater Hellion enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to each other creature. Uh, I have a response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to tap uh, the Opal Palace for one, uh, and I guess I'll sack Kong Ming. Okay. Uh, to Disciple of Grizzlebrand, I gain life equal to its toughness. Okay. You also pay two for the two life getting to draw two as well. Okay. Uh, and then four damage to everything? Yep. Oh, mama. Okay. Does it have haste? No. Whew. It has echo. It's oh. like reverse haste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, guess. Nelson, I'm going to attack you with the Deadwood Tree Folk and the Spellbreaker Behemoth. Uh, so that is a 5 6 and a 7 5. And then, um, Ben, I'm going to attack you with Marath and Gaji. Uh, Marath is a 5 5? Yeah, well, 7 5 and a. Um, 7-5. And I'm at 15 commander damage, aren't I? Yep. Uh, I'm dead, man. I can't block enough. Because these are all both at one toughness now because of the, the damage. Oh, the... Marath doesn't have trample, though. Marath doesn't trample. Oh, my goodness. All right. Sharoom in front of there. I'll take Gaji. Okay. I'm dead. <laughs> if, you say, um... if you say, I give it trample. <laughs> I give it um, double strike with Boros Charm. Okay. And then I will also... Um, okay, damage occurs, so it has first strike. Sure, so okay. it's dead. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to pay one to shoot Aloro. You got it. I die from regular damage happens, right? Yes. Okay, I'm dead. Okay, I'm going to put Mosswort Bridge into play. This okay. is Hideaway. I look at the top four lands in my library, or top four cards in my library. Well... <laughs> could be both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely could be both. Um, sure. I will put this under the Mosswort Bridge. And then these can go on the bottom of my library. Hmm. I didn't think it was going to end like this. I mean, I'm I'm as surprised as anyone. Yeah, it's you and I are the ones still alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're from the, 2013. Yeah, Commander 2013. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna untap. Let's see if I can rebuild some board here. Uh, I'm gonna gain two from Aloro, uh, and uh, yeah, I'll use two mana to uh, draw two, and then draw for the turn. I have already forgotten what I put under the hideaway card. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep looking. Um, okay, well... How many dudes can you cast? Uh, some amount of dudes. I have a bit more in the way of damage, though. Or, I guess... Your Deadwood Tree Folk is going to go away next turn. You have to pay Echo if you want your Hellion to stick around. It's just, it's a 6-6. Six, six. Yep. Hmm. How many times have you cast, uh, Pingy McBighorns? Uh, I have cast... Marath, uh, twice. Twice. Okay, so in a, if I kill it, 
It's going to cost nine. Yes, mm. which I believe I can do. Yep. Cool. With some despair. With some despair. Uh, okay, well, I think what I'm going to have to do... Man, I've only got one regular black source, huh? That's wild. I'm going to tap like Zo uh, and cast Reckless Spite, which is destroy two non-black creatures and I lose five. So I think I'm going to blow up Gaji oh. and the Spear Breaker is just a 5-5 five five now, right? Yep. Oh, cool. Spellbreaker. Yes. Uh, it, it's just a 5-5. Five five. It can't be countered and it means anything with power 5 or greater can't be countered. Okay. Can't be controlled. I think I'm going to blow up your commander in Gaji. Okay. Reasonable. I'm going to tap for two uh, and play Serene Master. Okay. So when it blocks, I exchange its power and the power of target creature it's blocking until end of turn. I'm going to play a land for the turn. In this case, let's go with the swamp that I forgot that I had in my hand. I think I'll just cast this Raven Familiar. Uh, so it's a 1-2 flyer, uh, and when it enters the battlefield, I look at the top three cards in my library, put one of them into my hand, and the rest on the bottom, in any order. I guess this one. And put them down like that. I have uh, two dinky weenies. Go ahead. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Take it easy on Serene Master there. Yeah. Untap, upkeep, judge question. Yeah. I would like to not pay for the Crater Hellion. Can I stack it so that the Crater Hellion is in the graveyard when Deadwood Tree Folk's vanishing? Yes. Okay. Bummer. So, removed, Deadwood Tree Folk die, Crater Hellion returns to my hand. Mm-hmm. Is that what I actually want? Um, yeah, though. <laughs> Just blow him up, man. Seems good. Yeah, okay. Crater Hellion does four. Then I'm going to cast Swift Foot Boots. Uh, okay. And equip them to the Crater Hellion. Yep. Then swing for 11. Yeah. You were asking if it has haste. Yeah. It can, is the answer. I put a Naya panorama into play. Okay. And I will say go. <laughs> you hear my voice crack there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to do the pristine talisman thingy with uh, Well of Lost Dreams again. Whoa, man. We're going to gain two. And I think I just got to find something here. <laughs> I'm going to draw two. Oh, okay, okay. And draw for the turn. How many cards do you have in hand, Cam? One. One card in hand. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm sure when the edit comes together, that's not going to make it, that's going to totally make it sound like I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Look how many cards <laughs> I have, Cameron. <laughs> that's a real bummer. I suppose it, it's not the size of the hand. <laughs> Did you pass with, oh no, you drew one out of turn, right? Mm -hmm. I use your two dinky dudes. <laughs> <laughs> dinky my, wieners. My dinky wieners. <laughs> it's also dinky wieners. My dinky wieners. <laughs> yeah, it's not the size of the hand, it's how the dinky wieners tab. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to actually, and I should have done this on my upkeep before I drew, sorry. I'm going to use active authority trigger to actually exile your swift foot boots. Okay. Um, but you get this now. Oh, okay. Hmm. One card in hand. There's Marath. Can Marath shoot me? Yes. Ah! Marath can fireball. <laughs> it takes mana though. Yeah, it does take, it takes mana. Mm-hmm. But Fire Moose can go dome. All right, so I'm going to tap for one and play this Phyrexian Reclamation uh, that I drew. Tap for two and pay two life to grab this uh, Sharoom back to my hand. Okay. Uh, then I would like to use the rest of said mana to cast them. Oh, I'll have one left over. So we'll go like Zo And... Uh, Bring her on out. And I get to return an artifact from the graveyard to the battlefield. In this case, I'm going to grab uh, Thopter Foundry. 
and put that out. Pass the turn. All right. End of your turn. I would like to activate Mosswort Bridge. Oh, no. To bring out Magus of the Arena. Cool. 5-5, five, five, 3, and tap. Tap target creature you control and target creature an opponent's choice he or she controls. Those creatures fight each other. That doesn't seem like they're going to be fair fights. I mean, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Untap. With Echo on the stack, I activate Megas of the Arena's ability, and I nominate Crater Helia. Choose your champion. Tap target creature you control, and target creature of an opponent's choice that I control. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tap Pristine Talisman, adding one and gaining a life, to activate Thopter Foundry, uh, sacrificing, let's say... Uh, yeah, I, the Pristine Talisman, um, and I make a Thopter, and I pick the Thopter. Okay. It's a close match, <laughs> but I think the Hellion wins. Okay. Uh, it is still at the beginning of my upkeep, mm -hmm. so I use Active Authority to exile Shroom the Hegemon. Ah, it's an artifact! <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is yours now. Oh, good. <laughs> um... I elect not to pay Echo, so the Hellion dies. Makes sense. I will draw a card for the turn. Spellbreaker Behemoth rumbles in. I request that it doesn't. I have reviewed your request. It is currently in the pipeline, but... Um, Get to know Grill has politics. I'll yeah. take the five. Okay. And then I would like to play this... Rake Claw Gargantuan. For, it is a 5-3 with... One generic mana target creature with power five or greater gains first strike until end of turn. All right. And I will say go. All right. Well, I will untap and gain two because of Aluro. Uh, and I'll just draw for the turn, I think. I'm going to play a land for the turn in this island. I choose not to do anything with active authority because, boy, was that a mistake. <laughs> And let's see. All right, everyone. Uh, I'm going to attempt to survive. I'm going to cast Death death Grasp uh, for three, uh, dealing three damage to the Gargantuan. All right. Uh, and gaining three life. Then I'm going to go to combat. Interesting. And cast Spinal Embrace. What's it do? Uh, for six, it's going to untap target creature I don't control and gain control of it. Let's say the fight man. Okay. It gains haste, uh, and at the end, beginning of my next end step, I sack it. If I do, I gain life equal to the toughness of it. So, um, bleh. Okay. For five. I take five. Second main, I am scared. Uh, <laughs> and I go to end step and sacrifice this friendo. Okay. Uh, so I gain five. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I untap. I draw a card. Uh, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. Marath. Yeah. Then I would like to put this Boros Garrison into play, returning Mosswort Bridge to my hand. No. <laughs> then I would like to swang with Spellbreaker Behemoth. I think I know what's going to happen. Only one way to find out. <laughs> no, I let it through. Okay, take five. Ow. Um, then I got to say go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> untap. Uh, gain two life. I am going to pay two this time uh, for uh, the Well of Lost Dreams, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Um, and draw two, and draw for the turn. I will play this Esper Panorama. It's a 9-9? Nine nine. It's a 9-9. Nine nine. Are you sure it's not, not a 9-9? Nine nine? Fire Moose is a 9-9. Nine nine. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Fire Moose can shoot me in the face, mm -hmm. from my understanding of uh, what Fire Moose do. So... The last megafauna. The Lorax is back and it's pissed. <laughs> and on fire. No, to be fair, we set it on fire to try and kill it. Right, yes, yeah, yeah. 
When I was your age, I had to travel to school uphill both ways in 10 feet of snow, and there were fire moose on both sides of the road. And this card was printed. It's Limduel's Vault. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna go searching on a way to not die. So All right. I look at the top five cards in my library. As many times as I choose, I may pay one life, put those cards on the bottom, and do it again. <laughs> All right. What does this deck have? <laughs> well, these aren't it. I pay a life. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. Put those cards in, the, uh, then shuffle your library and put the last cards you looked at this way on the top of it in any order. Oh, it doesn't even draw me them. No, it doesn't draw a card. You should pay a life and try again then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's not a bad idea. I'm going to pay a life. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll go for another five. Yeah, that's pretty good. The award for most powerful dead commander mm. goes to Prosper Tomebath. Let's see. Do it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm I gonna you. pay a life and go for the next five. <laughs> um, no, these ones aren't very good. I think I'm gonna pay a life and go for the next five. Uh, oh, this could make goats. But goats aren't going to win me, so I think I'm going to pay a life <laughs> uh, and go for the next five. That was five lands, so I think I'm going to pay a life uh, and go for the next five. I don't have a joke this time, so I think I'm going to pay a life <laughs> and go for the next five. We already, I already cursed you this game once, so I think I'm going to pay five, uh, one and go for the next one. Oh, the classic limb doll play. I think this yeah. is going to be where it's at, though. Wow, this is the worst one. So I clearly <laughs> can't do that. So I think I'm going to... Uh... Well, you, you know, the way the rules work, you're supposed to finish resolving Limdul's Vault. Now, oh, you have sick! To, you have to keep the next five and then shuffle. Oh, because I literally can't pay. Because well, you don't have the life point to pay, yes. That's great. But you get to keep those five. Right. And then shuffle your library. Now, in response to looking, could I crack Thopter Foundry so I could gain a life? Mm, no. Mm. no. Well, I'm going to... I think I'm going to put the Soul Ring on top of here, uh, just on time, and pass it. <laughs> <laughs> Victory! <laughs> Good game, buddy. Good game. Well played. Good game. Good job. That was a lot of fun. Good game. Good game. Good game, Kathleen. Well played. See you on the next Elder Dragon Social Club.